Hey guys, I want to do a book review on Whole in Our Holiness, uh, a book that I believe every Christian should read. I would actually put it in the top 10 books every Christian should read, not because it's one of the top 10 best books ever written, but because I think it's essential to the Christian life. I think it's readable uh, for every Christian, understandable for every Christian. Uh, the, the topics are very relevant uh, to the Christianity in which we live. Uh, this was written 10 years ago by Kevin DeYoung, and he was writing it in the height of the gospel-centered movement, that young, restless, and reformed uh, movement. And he was writing prophetically. He was writing to be a voice uh, within the movement, speaking into and correcting uh, not only some imbalances, but some false teachings. Uh, so he's seeking to guard from legalism, but he is addressing antinomianism. I do believe this is a a, a primer, uh, an entry-level primer on antinomianism. Uh, anti meaning uh, against, uh, nomian law, uh, that teaching that is anti-law, that teaching that is if you believe in, in the gospel, if you receive justification by faith and, and uh, receive Christ by faith, uh, you, 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 you do not need to focus on holiness or godliness, or maybe uh, just a justification-centered, uh, positional sanctification type, type view of, of sanctification. I mean, this gets into sanctification. That's what this is about. But he's dealing with that overemphasis on justification and positional righteousness, uh, which would devalue or de-emphasize the need to pursue holiness. Um, the, it, it would ignore often um, that work and effort needed to grow in godliness. Um, and that's and a lot of Christians don't even know they're sitting under preaching that um, that's antinomian. And reading this book would allow you to understand and discern uh, is is the preaching the gospel preaching I'm hearing uh, holistic, apostolic, biblical? Is this how Paul preached the gospel? The New Testament authors preached the gospel. Um, is this really the path to holiness, the way that I'm being taught the gospel and holiness and how they relate um, or not? And, and I think Kevin DeYoung gives a, a confessional, reformed, uh, classical kind of position on the issue. He, he, he's quoting the Belgic Confession, uh, the Westminster Confession, Heidelberg Catechism. Uh, these are just brief quotes. He doesn't bog you down in kind of scholarly squabbles about all of this, um, but he, he gives that perspective. And he, really, it's a book filled with scripture um, and, and just clarity on multi-layered, nuanced issues that can get rather complex and difficult very quickly. You wouldn't know that reading the book because he masterfully uh, uh, sails through those waters and, and you wouldn't know how complex and difficult these things have been historically, um, which I think in one sense is a strength of the book and in another sense it's the greatest weakness of the book. Um, and so... Uh, it's a strength because it allows him to put all the weight and emphasis on the biblical text itself. And what does the Bible say about these these things? So that's obviously a strength. The weakness is, you know, this isn't an issue that's new to our day. You know, how does, how does the gospel relate to sanctification? How does the gospel relate to the pursuit of holiness? Is a debate the church has been having in depth and with lots of passion and many, many words written since the 16th century, since the Reformation. In fact, R.C. Sproul said uh, this is the most or one of the most significant issues the church has had to deal with since the Reformation. And, and, and so this is, this is something, you know, Michael Horton said this is a conversation that's not going away. And so in that regard, this book is always relevant. Um, I will say it's not as relevant in our day as it was in 2012 because the amount of antinomian preaching coming out of that reformed resurgence in that time, and I, I, I know because I was 
I was in that. I was listening to many of the preachers. Uh, a lot of antinomianism was in the pulpits under the banner of gospel-centered preaching. And he addresses that head on in that in 2012 when that was happening at its peak. I don't think, I think a lot of people have taken heed to what he said. I think a lot of people have come to more confessionally reformed positions on the issue of sanctification and the relationship between the law and the gospel and these type of things. Um, is that a result of this book? In part, um, and, and many other voices speaking into the, to the issue. So I, I would recommend this for every Christian. Um, I think it's, it's necessary and, and needed. However, if you're looking for a scholarly work, if you're looking, this is not it, um, if you're looking for a historical treatment of antinomianism and the, deba the debates surrounding the issue of holiness and sanctification and all of these things, this is not it. In fact, he doesn't even get into the history of it at all, uh, which is, in my opinion, the, the biggest weakness of this book. Now, it's good because it keeps it simple, right? As soon as you get into the history of it, it it's immediately uh, far more complex uh, complex. And so I think he intentionally does that. I know De Young didn't, uh, ignorantly or, or naively just forget to mention the history. He, he's very aware of the history. I think he intentionally left it out for the sake of simplicity. So anyone who reads this, it would be wise to follow it up with a more thorough, uh, book that's going to get into, uh, antinomianism and some of these things more directly and more historically. And there's actually, in God's providence, I, again, I don't think De Young knew this when he was uh, when he chose to leave out the historical discussion surrounding this. I don't think he knew that three books were in the pipeline. Uh, but since 2012, three lay level, not scholarly, lay level uh, books have been written on antinomianism um, that are very readable and have a strong emphasis on the history. Uh, one of those is Mark Jones' book called Antinomianism, Reformed Theology's Unwelcomed Guest. That was uh, written in 2013, all right? Uh, a year after this, uh, De Young's book. Uh, Sinclair Ferguson, a little bit more popular book, he wrote was called The Whole Christ. That was in 2016. And he was, he was really trying to get into uh, the issues of legalism, antinomianism, and gospel assurance with an emphasis on the Marrow controversy, which is obviously a historical controversy, and he's saying that is relevant today. And so um, C. Clair and Ferguson's book is helpful and, and historical. Uh, and then there was another book in 2018 uh, written by um, a, a professor named Whitney Gamble called Christ the Law and Antinomianism in the Westminster Assembly. And and her book is, is quite profound as well, and it's very historical in, in its treatment. Uh, Carl Truman, in fact, said it's a signal, uh, signal contribution to, to the discussion on antinomianism. It's, it's a very important work. So all three of those books were written in the last 10 years after Kevin DeYoung's Whole in Our Holiness, and they would, they would be good to follow up this if anyone wants to go more in depth. Um, if I had to pick one of those, I would say go with Sinclair Ferguson's as a follow-up to this, um, The Whole Christ. But all three of those are, are very important contributions to the discussion on antinomianism at a lay level. All right, We're not talking scholarly difficult books here. Um, very readable. All these authors have done a great job at, at, at making uh, these works accessible to all Christians uh, so that the whole church can benefit um, from, from this study. So, um, yeah, I, I, I do think every Christian should read this and the, if, if this is not the book on holiness, you know, that's JC Ryle's book, uh, at the, at the end of the last century. Um, and, and if another very significant book is, is, uh, Jerry Bridges, a pursuit of holiness, but this is right there with them. I, I would put this with them. It's going to be a classic, um, it's a solid, thorough um, treatment that gets into many of the necessary categories dealing with sanctification, holiness, and the gospel. So I hope that's helpful. Um, don't want to talk. I, I don't really want to get into the content of the book itself. Just kind of the context 
uh, of the book and, and its, uh, its relevance to the church today. Uh, you should read it. It's only 146 pages. I'd recommend you read it to get the content of the book itself. Blessings, guys. We'll talk to you later.